Good morning, I'm Maddie Jansen, and this is the podcast of 17 News at Sunrise. It's everything you need to know to start your day in about 15 minutes. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Sunrise. Good morning, detectives. Just clearing the scene of a deadly shooting in South Bakersfield. 17's Mary Kay Paquette will be live there with the latest. Kern County is now considering adding the motto in God We Trust to patrol cars. This after Shafter gets ready to take on the issue. We'll tell you what Sheriff Donna Youngblood had to say about the controversial proposal. An annual family vacation turns tragic. Two teens missing in the Kern River. Crews will be out searching again this morning as the family waits in hopes. This is Tuesday, June 18th, 2018. Good morning. Great to have you with us. I'm Maddie Jansen alongside Alex Fisher and Kevin Charette. Yeah, and of course, it was a warm day yesterday, and I know that uh, that trend is going to continue. Yeah, more warm weather in store for us today. In fact, yesterday we were below the century mark. Today, I think we'll push it uh, just right near 100. Barely? Just barely. Uh, But it's definitely going to be hot, and, you know, we've been talking about the river and how inviting it is. But uh, just stay out. It's uh, flowing pretty fast right now. Yesterday's high, 98 degrees. Our record of 109. Uh, Set back in 1961, so we're far off from that. Right now, we sit at 77 in Bakersfield with no winds to talk about at this time. And as we take a look at the day, we will be starting out in the mid-70s by 7 a.m., 94 at noon. And then by 3 o'clock, we should be right near 101. 59 degrees in the Tehachapi area right now. No winds for you. We'll see a little breeze pick up throughout the afternoon, starting out near 60. And then we are expecting the 80s this afternoon by 3 o'clock, a northwest wind at 18, and we'll be right near 86. We begin this morning with breaking news overnight in South Bakersfield. Police were investigating a deadly shooting. It happened just after 11 last night on Wilson Road near the intersection with South 8th Street. The scene was very active until about 45 minutes ago when detectives left. That's where we find 17's Mary-Kate Paquette live there with the latest this morning and what we're learning. Good morning, Mary-Kate. Good morning, Maddie. Alex, that's right. A man is dead this morning following that late night shooting here in the 1600 block of Wilson Road, just off of South 8th Street. Now, this was, Maddie, as you said, a very active scene until about uh, 45 minutes ago. Police were still out here into the early morning hours investigating this shooting. When police originally received calls, they received calls of multiple, uh, uh, they received multiple calls of a shooting in the area. When they arrived on scene, they found a man lying in the road suffering from several gunshot wounds. Paramedics arrived on scene and took the man to the hospital where he then died. Right now, BPD says they don't have any suspects in custody and there's very limited suspect information at this time. Uh, it's very early in the investigation, so we're still looking for possible motives and uh, involved parties. Uh, we do not have any reports of any other uh, injuries. Detectives are asking anyone with information about the shooting to call BPD at 327-7111. Now, this latest homicide brings us to 42 so far this year. Again, this scene was very active until about 45 minutes ago. This road shut down here um, in the 1600 block of Wilson, but it has since reopened. So if this is part of your morning commute, it is clear, and you are good to go to come this air, uh, to come this way. For now, I'm live in South Bakersfield. Maddie, Alex. All right, thanks very much, Mary-Kate. And as Mary-Kate just mentioned, this brings the total number of homicides in Kern County to 42, according to our Kern County Homicide Tracker. That's down from 54, the number of homicides there were recorded at this time last year. 2018 was the deadliest year on record. We keep track of all of those cases and share what we've learned about the victims. You can find that all on our website, kget.com. Just click on the Homicide Tracker icon. 504 now, and it has been a divisive topic of debate in cities around Kern County for months now. Should the words in God we trust be put on patrol cars? Now Sheriff Donnie Youngblood is weighing in. And 17's Karen Waugh has this response. It started with Delano. In April, it first approved in God we trust decals on its police and fire vehicles. Two weeks ago, the Bakersfield City Council also voted in favor. First Delano, then Bakersfield, and now the county is deciding if these four words belong on patrol cars. It's your patrol car. These are all uh, adults that are out there putting their lives on the line. They have the absolute right to either have it on there or not, and I'm okay with either way. Unlike the Bakersfield City Council, the Board of Supervisors will have no say, according to Youngblood. The board cannot direct to be on 
it's the sheriff's decision. Supporters of the phrase say it's a sign of patriotism. It's on our money, and it's been our national motto since 1956. I would be happy to put one on my car. Uh, but there may be some people that, that might not be as happy as I am to put it on their car, and I wouldn't force them to do that. Opponents argue the separation of church and state, and they worry the choice of decals will alienate non-religious officers. This is an issue that I'm not comfortable dictating because it's so close to, re- to religion, and your religion, your God, may be different than mine. As for the cost... Cost is the least problem with this, with this issue. In the city of Bakersfield, several local business owners have offered to pay for the decals, so it won't cost taxpayers a dime. Ultimately... The topic that we're talking about can be very divisive. I'm sure there'll be pushback on both directions. Tonight, Shafter City Council will also make a decision about these decals. As always, their meetings are open to the public. They start at 7 p.m. at 336 Pacific Avenue. I'm Karen Hua, 17 News. We're expecting a big announcement from President Trump today. He is expected to officially kick off his re-election campaign. The president is holding a re-election rally tonight in Orlando. First Lady Melania Trump, Vice President Mike Pence, and Second Lady Karen Pence will join the president at the event. Florida will be a key state for him in 2020. There are few paths to victory that do not include winning the state's 29 electoral votes. Supporters started lining up and camping out yesterday in anticipation of the president's arrival. And coming up in about 25 minutes, we'll hear from some of those people, plus new numbers showing how President Trump is doing in those polls. 506 now. A Tehachapi woman accused of killing her ex is set to appear in court this morning. Police say Wendy Howard shot and killed her ex-husband, Kelly Pitts, on June 5th. The shooting happened after she reported him to police for allegedly molesting their 16-year-old daughter. Howard also says Pitts molested her older daughter. Police investigated those claims back in 2006, but the DA never filed charges. Right now, Howard is behind bars, being held on $1 million bail. She's requesting that amount be reduced. A judge has ordered a Bakersfield woman accused of killing her newborn grandson to stand trial. Bianca Dillon faces three felony charges, including first-degree murder. Court documents state Dillon drowned the baby just after her 15-year-old daughter gave birth inside the bathroom of their southwest Bakersfield home back in November. Documents say Dillon and her nephew, 33-year-old Bakshinder Paul Singman, then buried the body underneath a planter in the backyard. Man disappeared and has not been seen since November. He's wanted as an accessory. Dillon is being held without bail. She is due in court again later this month. A search for two teenage boys who went missing in the Kern River is set to resume this morning. The 15- and 19-year-old were last seen going into the river near the Keysville South Campgrounds Sunday morning. The sister of the 19-year-old told 17 News their families at a loss. As a fun Father's Day weekend getaway turned into a tragic waiting game. She says the 15-year-old is her cousin, the 19-year-old her brother. The family says the visit to Keysville um, is something they do every year, and the teens always swim in the river. Search and rescue crews were out in force yesterday, and they plan to keep looking today. And the search for the teens continues. We're asking the question, should the government begin restricting access to the Kern River? It's something that's been done in Fresno County near the Kings River. One man we spoke with says the government should not restrict access. He believes people need to make decisions for themselves. We should be free to enjoy this river. I don't like government telling people they can't do something. We should be free to be stupid. It's a liberty. That's unfortunate. Government has no business telling us what we can and can't do. Kern County officials say even if they sought to restrict access, it would be a logistical nightmare. The Kern River has hundreds of unofficial access points. Some of those are on state land, some of those are in county property, some of them are federal property, and then still yet more are on private property. Instead, the county has decided to take the approach of educating people about the dangers of the Kern River. They say always wear a life vest and never use pool floats in these swift conditions. We talk about it every year, you know, how dangerous it is. But, I mean, even on the west side of town, I was even going by yesterday on Sockdale Highway and just going over the overpass and seeing how full the river is down there. It's incredibly full. And, yeah, talking about not using pool floats, you think of how flimsy some of those pool floats are. There are so many things underneath um, that you can't see necessarily, rocks and branches that 
have been growing when there was not so much water uh, in the river. So there are trees, you and, know, right in the middle. Yeah, and let's be real. Okay. We know what's at the bottom because <laughs> we we've see seen it. the river <laughs> bed dry All up. So we know what's under there. Yeah. And, of course, uh, the water keeps on We just don't uh, want difficulty. another year like oh, 2017. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Welcome back at 520. It's a jam-packed agenda at the Board of Supervisors meeting today. Topping the list of things to talk about, the board will pick up where it left off on the issue of medical cannabis. Last week, supervisors were set to review how dispensaries are complying with the ban on medicinal marijuana dispensaries, which the county started enforcing last month. The board was also supposed to hear about a ballot measure from Central Valley Cannabis that has qualified for the March 2020 ballot. The discussion had to be put off because Supervisor Mike Maggard was called in for jury duty. So today, supervisors are supposed to review those things and weigh options. Those include putting their own measure on the ballot or perhaps drafting an ordinance to allow medicinal marijuana dispensaries under a new set of rules. Supervisors will also take up the salary of the new County Fire Chief David Witt. In a letter to the board, County Administrative Officer Ryan Alsop says Witt negotiated a salary of about $7,100 every two weeks. Supervisors are expected to approve the salary today. Employees at the Bakersfield, California are preparing to get their final paychecks June 30th. That's the day union representatives, staffers at the Bakersfield, California were told via email they'd be that, uh, that they would receive their last paycheck from the company. It's also the day the paper sale to Canadian businessman Stephen Malkowich becomes official. The email didn't say whether employees will be cut loose after getting their final paychecks or be retained by the new owner. If you'd like to read the entire email, you can. We put it on our website, kget.com. You may have spotted some familiar faces scouring the streets of Bakersfield for trash. The 17 Clean team was out all morning yesterday cleaning up the streets to help keep our neighborhood beautiful. It was part of our annual Founders Day of Caring. Next, our stations nationwide, including us here at KGET, took to the streets to give back to the community. Our parent company hopes this will inspire you to partner with an organization and help the community you live in.